Welcome to lecture 39 in which we will continue discussion of the word problem that we were considering in lecture 38 and we will also comment on some ethical considerations. So you will recall that uh, this truth table here is the truth table that we arrived at for the word problem we were considering in lecture 38. And you will also recall that in the test for lecture 38 you were determining the minimal sum expressions for some of these functions S, RQ, RD, RN1, and RN2 in terms of the variables Q, D, N1, and N2. Now if you uh, had done all of that work, what you would have found is summarized down here. In that design, you would have found that the minimal sum expression for S had four literals. That each minimal sum expression for RD had ten literals. The minimal sum expression for RN2 had ten literals. Each minimal sum expression for RN1 had 15 literals, and the minimal sum expression for RQ had 4 literals. So now we're going to consider a slight change in the situation. Recall that the, the way that this machine worked. What you would do is insert the coins in some slots, and then after you have had inserted the money, you would push a button and uh, the customer would push a button and then wait for the product to be uh, sold to him and to give uh, wait for his change as well. Well, since all of the money is right there in front of you at the time that you push the button, it isn't like most of the vending machines on campus where you insert one coin and then you insert another coin and you know you might have a situation where you think you have a enough change but then you uh, find out when you insert your last coin that you really didn't have enough change you couldn't have that situation in this machine exactly because uh, well it wouldn't be a matter of uh, you would f you would uh, find out accidentally because in this kind of machine you would have to have inserted all the coins in the appropriate slots before you hit that button and then when you hit the button that's it that's an irrevocable um, action where you are essentially saying okay this is my money now I want to make the purchase and you have all of your money there so in view of that um, it's possible that the vendor might reason as follows he might say that well the person has all the money there in the slot in the in the appropriate slots he can see whether or not he has enough change there to buy the product. So the vendor might reason that if this person um, doesn't put in enough money, then it's sort of his tough luck and uh, the, the vendor might not really mind too much if he shortchanges the customer in that situation because after all he shouldn't have put in an insufficient amount of money now I know you uh, you know before you jump the gun let me say I know you might object to this you might say it's unethical and that's what we're going to be talking about is ethical considerations but there there may be a payoff here and I'm not talking just about the payoff of the uh, vendor getting to keep the the money. I'm not talking just really about that. I'm talking about something else. There might be some benefit if we could uh, make some kind of assumption that we don't care if we give the customer enough change when he inserts too little change. That might uh, that assumption might do something for us. We'll have to investigate and see. Likewise if the customer inserts too many coins again the customer might not mind if he short changes uh, excuse me the vendor might not mind if he short changes the customer now i'm not saying here that if the customer puts in too much money i'm saying too many coins and let me make clear what the distinction is there if the customer puts in a quarter and only a quarter to buy this 20 cent item then he should certainly get his 
item and five cents back because after all he hasn't done anything sort of unreasonable there we just assume that he only had a quarter and he inserted it and therefore he deserves his his uh, item and he deserves five cents change but if the customer put in a quarter and a nickel for this 20 cent item then he's done something unreasonable because that nickel was not needed at all and so in a case like that perhaps the uh, vendor would reason that you know he doesn't he doesn't mind too much if he uh, shortchanges the customer so uh, we'll we'll talk about this in in more detail in just a moment but those are the ideas and it's summarized right here to the right we will say what effect would it have on the design of this vending machine if the vendor had designed it to implement the policy of never giving the customer too much change but possibly now not definitely but possibly giving the customer too little change if he inserts less than 20 cents or if he inserts too many coins how would that change in the vendor's policy how would that change the design or would it change the design of the machine well we'll investigate that question right now so we have uh, down here I have repeated the table but we're going to make the appropriate changes to it now to reflect this new policy and then we'll see what happens so we start again with a situation where the customer puts in no money at all and of course uh, still with this uh, new design uh, we still want to make a decision of not vending the item and giving no change so everything is the same for the first line but uh, now for the second line we are already see a change because if the customer inserts just one nickel in the slot in the second nickel slot well that's not enough money to buy this 20 cent item so that's an unreasonable thing for the customer to do so maybe the vendor would say well in that case uh, I don't know uh, I won't mind if we don't give that customer the nickel back I'm not gonna absolutely outlaw that possibility but I'm not gonna guarantee it either so this one here becomes instead of a one we have a don't care condition which I will denote with an X likewise if the customer puts only a nickel in slot in one well that's just five cents for the 20 cent item once again and so if we since the customer is doing something unreasonable there we'll say okay we don't care if we give him the money back so we'll give an X there as well likewise for the next situation where we have a nickel and slot in one and a nickel and slot in two that's not enough money and so we don't care um, if we give them if we give the customer back those nickels and the same thing happens here for this dime so uh, we'll get an X over here for the dime and the nickel still this is too little money and so we'll have X for the dime and X for the nickel over here and the same situation here except that we have a different nickel slot so again X for the dime and X for the nickel now we uh, get down to this now here uh, the uh, customer has inserted 20 cents a dime and two nickels everything is reasonable so we give him the item and no change here the customer has put in a quarter and no other coins so he has not put in too many coins here and he should get the item and he should get five cents back but here the customer has put in a quarter and a nickel now since he's put in 30 cents he should definitely get the item so we have a one for s but uh, since he's put in uh, more money or excuse me since he's put in more coins than was necessary uh, we will say that we don't care if he gets uh, this change back now you could argue uh, in this case and say well 
uh, we should give him back at least five cents because maybe he didn't have anything uh, besides that one nickel, he didn't have anything else lower, uh, smaller than a quarter. But let's just keep this simple. We don't want to make it too complicated. So we'll just say again, uh, the policy is that if the customer puts in too many coins, then we don't care if he gets shortchanged in his change. And so we'll go ahead and put the X there uh, in that case. Let's see. I'm sorry. I put this in the wrong line here. The X should be right there because we're talking about this case here where the customer inserts a quarter and a nickel. And of course, the same goes here in this line. This is the same situation except that the customer has put the nickel in a different slot. Okay. And here again, the customer is putting in too many coins. So we'll keep one for S, but uh, we don't care about this change. And uh, here, a quarter and a dime. Again, uh, we don't care about the change over here again. A quarter, a dime, and a nickel. Again, we don't care about the change. A quarter, a dime, and a nickel here again don't care about the change and finally a quarter a dime and two nickels and so uh, again we don't care about the change so that fills in the table with these new rules and now let's um, uh, I, I'll encourage you to stop the video at this point and to try to find the minimal sum expressions uh, in fact, part of this will be for our test to find the minimal sum expressions. Go ahead and try to find all of these. I'll go ahead and make up your test questions and then we'll resume the video. Before jumping into the uh, questions, let's do one example to make sure this is clear. So we'll look at the column here for RN2 and we'll find all minimal sums for RN2 just as we did before. But now we have all these don't care conditions that we need to remember about. So in the first uh, row of the tr of the Carnot map for RN2, we'll have zero uh, and then don't care, zero, don't care. Zero, don't care, zero, don't care. Then uh, for the next four, we'll have zero, don't care, zero, zero. Zero, don't care, zero, zero. For the next four after that, we'll have zero, 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 zero. And finally, for the last four, we'll have zero, don't care, don't care, zero, zero, don't care, don't care, zero. Now, before you do any work on this in trying to identify prime implicants or essential prime implicants or minimal sums, let's just look at it this way. You can look at this Carnot map and you can see that, um, okay, whatever the prime implicants are here, when we get to the next step where we try to identify essential prime implicants, remember that essential prime implicants are those prime implicants that have essential one cells. But a don't care condition can never be an essential one cell. And since there are only don't care conditions in this Carnot map, we will not have any essential prime implicants. So when we get down to the stage of writing all minimal sums, remember for each minimal sum, we start with what is essential. We start with the essential prime implicants. Well, there's nothing to start with. There's no, a, a, no prime implicants that are essential. And then when we look up at the kernel map and say, okay, uh, now that we've written down all the essential prime implicants, which in this case there are none, now let's look at what else must be accounted for. Well, there's nothing here that must be accounted for because there's not a single uh, of the ordinary ones at all. These are all the squiggly ones. They're all don't care conditions. And therefore, the very simplest choice for RN2 is simply zero. 
So that means that no circuitry at all, if we, if we adopt this new policy, once again, our policy is that, it, you know, we're always going to vend when the customer puts in 20 cents or more. So the, the customer will never be cheated out of his item relative to the, the first case. He'll, in fact, you can see that um, if you look at the variable, at the, look at the function S here, you see that there are uh, S is exactly as it was in our first design. So the the customer is always going to get his item when he puts in twenty cents or more. It's just that he may be shortchanged if he does things that are unreasonable. And what do we define by unreasonable? If the customer puts in too little money, or if he puts in more coins than necessary. And by making that one simple change in the policy, which, again, may be considered unethical because, uh, you know, I, I mean, first of all, obviously, the vendor would need to notify the customer about this. But, uh, you know, perhaps uh, the customer cannot read uh, the language in which the sign is written. And so that would seem to be unfair to him or perhaps it's a very young a customer or a customer who doesn't see well so there are a number of considerations here but uh, it, the fact remains that by making this change in the policy RN2 no circuitry is needed at all for RN2 now whereas in the previous case RN2 uh, had a minimal sum expression with 10 literals so some circuitry was needed in order to implement R N2. Now I think that as you go through and find the minimal sum expressions for these other functions you're going to find that there is a considerable amount of simplification in a lot of them and therefore this machine uh, the, the new machine implementing this new policy would probably be much cheaper to build and much cheaper to maintain and who knows, maybe the vendor would use the savings to sell a higher quality product to his customers. Or maybe he would uh, every now and then um, uh, give, give the customers gifts or something else to reward them uh, for letting him have this vending machine that has this uh, somewhat eccentric policy. But again, remember, it's never... Uh, it's never going to cheat the customer out of the item when he deserves it, but if the customer does something unreasonable about the money, even, uh, amount of money he inserts, uh, the amount of change uh, may or may not be the correct amount. So this is, uh, this is an interesting problem because it shows us a practical application of don't care conditions, plus it shows us how ethical considerations might enter into a problem. It's maybe not always quite as clear as one would think. There are some some trade-offs here by doing something that seems maybe a little bit shady ethically. The vendor is able to save a lot of money. And of course, if he just pockets this, then it's uh, certainly harder for us to think of it as an ethical way to proceed. But if he refunds that uh, some of those savings to the customer or uh, perhaps gives the customer a higher quality product uh, well I'll leave it to you to, to make up your own mind as to whether or not uh, you would find that acceptable but anyway uh, that's the idea of this lecture and now let's get on to our test um, question 39.1 find all minimal sum expressions for RN1 and you see the choices are A RN1 equals 0 B RN1 equals Q prime D prime N1 C, Rn1 equals Q, N1 prime, N2 prime, and D, Rn1 equals 1. 39.2, find all minimal sums for Rd, and the choices are A, Rd equals 1, B, Rd equals Q, D, N1, N2, C, Rd equals Q prime, D prime, N1 prime, N2 prime, and D, Rd equals 0, and then, as usual, 39.3 will be in class. And that concludes our final lecture, so good luck.